that you guys are at home right now having all sorts of fun with your brothers and sisters, or maybe just your mom and dad. So make sure that you're doing your e-learning, and most importantly, make sure that you're helping out around your house. Because I promise you that your mom and dad, mom or dad don't want to go, please clean your room, pick up after yourself, do your homework, do your e-learning. They would love to say, thank you so much for helping up around the house. I really appreciate it. So just remember to be a very good helper while we're off school. And before you know it, we will be back at school having all sorts of fun. But for the time being, it's safest for you to be at home with your mom and dad, snuggling, having all sorts of good times with them, and maybe getting to watch a little more TV and playing with your toys. Now, what else I'm doing is I get to go to each school to make sure that everything's okay while everybody's gone. And today, I'm at Bailey Elementary in Mrs. Mercon's room. And it made me think maybe some boys and girls would love to hear a story read to them. Would you guys like to hear a story? What's, you would? I did, I heard some of you say yes, I promise. You would like to hear a story? Well, that's fantastic because I would love to read a story to you. And I'm gonna read my favorite story. All right, boys and girls, let's get ready for the story. So, if you're not sitting crisscross applesauce, go ahead and do that now. And then, if you have a couple of wigglies in, let's get those hands and get those wiggles out. Ooh, I saw them fly. Now, let's bring our hands together and let's put our hands in our jar of jam so we're not bothering anybody next to us. And maybe there's nobody next to us. Maybe it's stuffed animals or maybe it's a brother or sister or a friend. But let's put our hands in a jam. And today's type of jam is not going to be apple or strawberry, grape or apricot, or anything that you can think of. Because today's jam is going to be spaghetti and meatball jam. But first story, my favorite story, Memoirs of a Goldfish. And this is my favorite story for many, many, many reasons, but I won't go into them now. So a memoir is a short story about somebody's life in a certain amount of time. And for this certain story, it goes over the course of about 14 days, I think, 15 days, something like that. So we will get started. Memoirs of a Goldfish. Hello everybody, my name is George, and I am a goldfish, and I love to swim, which is good because I am a fish. And I have this big, giant bowl of crystal clear, beautiful water, and I just got fed so my belly is all full, and well, I'm just going to swim because I am a fish, and that's what I do. But since my tank is, or since my bowl is so big, I'm just going to swim around my bowl twice. So today, day two, I swam around my bowl again twice. And it was so much fun. The water is just the perfect temperature. It's crystal clear. I again got fed. My belly is all full. but. It sure would be nice if maybe a friend could come visit from time to time. I mean, I do have a big bowl. We could have so much fun. There's plenty of room for activities in here, for heaven's sakes. But I don't mind it. Sometimes it is a good, good to be by myself. But it sure would be nice maybe if a friend came over. Day three. Well, big guess. Today I swam around my bowl twice again. And it was fun. It was a long time. I mean, my bowl is really, really, really big. 
And because I swam on my, on my bowl a little faster than I normally do, it kind of made me tired. So I thought maybe I should take a nap. And then I remembered, oh, George, you silly, silly, silly goldfish. Fish don't sleep, for heaven's sakes. So I swam around my bowl a third time. And while well, it was nice, the water is perfect. Perfect for maybe a friend to come over. If only I could have a friend. I mean, I'm a really, really friendly goldfish. I love all sorts of different type of fish. Maybe, just maybe, somebody will come and visit me tomorrow. I mean, it sure would be nice if I could have just one friend come and visit. I promise I would share all the space in my bowl. I mean, there's not really much else to do. We could play tag, though. I mean, there is room for that. Oh, well, maybe tomorrow. Day four. Well, today I got a little company. Although I will tell you, I don't necessarily like the bit, one bit of him at all. I mean, he's wearing a big gold helmet and a big purple jumpsuit. He kind of looks like an underwater genie. I wonder if he will grant any of my wishes. Maybe if I rub his head, he will grant my wish. I don't know if I want to get that close to him, though. He is kind of creepy. And I went and introduced myself, and I said, Hello, my name is George, and I'm a goldfish, and this is my bowl. It's a big bowl, and I'm very happy that you're here, but could you please tell me your name? And you know what he said? That's all he said. He simply just makes bubbles all day long. He kind of stands there. I don't know if there's anybody in there or not. I don't know if he's a genie. I'm just not really sure. This isn't really the type of company that I wanted, but I guess beggars can't be choosers. At least I'm in the bowl, and there's somebody else with me, even if he doesn't really talk anything but bubbles. Day five. Well, Mr. Bubbles hasn't said a word other than Oh, yeah, by the way, I named him Mr. Bubbles because that's all he says. I always say, hey there, my name is George. And unfortunately, he just says, so that's how he got the name Mr. Bubbles. I will tell you, though, other than the bubbles, he doesn't really do much else. He just stands there with his arms out in the air. Occasionally, he floats a little bit. I don't know if he's underwater genie or if there's anybody even there, in there. He's just, well, he's sort of, sort of creepy. I'm just going to stay on my side of the bowl, and Mr. Bubbles can stay on his side of the bubble, bowls. Day six. Well... Today, my bowl looks like a garden. There are a bunch of plants in here now, and guess what? I guess I'm going to have to water them. Like, I really have time for that for my, with my daily swims and trying to avoid Mr. Bubbles. But then I thought about it for a second, and I remembered I'm in a big bowl of water, so I don't necessarily have to water them ever. So this is the greatest garden of all time. It just grows and grows and grows, and I don't have to do anything. I actually kind of like it, because I can swim through the different trees that are in here, and it kind of itches my gills, just in case they're itchy, and my fins. So they're not too bad. It's kind of a game, too. I can play hide and seek for Mr. Bubbles. Although he doesn't actually go anywhere, and he doesn't say anything but Day seven. Mr. Bubbles and I now have company. He's a snail. His name is Melvin, and he likes to eat the slime off the inside of the bowl. By the way, Mr. Bubbles and I, we think he's disgusting. He constantly has green stuff on his face. And I said to him, Melvin, could you please 
please, please wipe your face. And you know what Melvin said? Melvin said, uh, George, I like to save that for later. It's real delicious, especially when it gets crunchy. It's kind of like a snack. How disgusting is that? He doesn't even know how to wipe his face. Does mom not teach him any manners? Even Mr. Bubbles was disgusted. I could tell because his bubbles changed a little bit. Day eight. All right, things are getting very crowded. While watering the plants, ha <laughs> ha, just kidding. Remember, I'm in a big bowl of water. I met a crab named Fred. I offered him my fin and said, hello, my name's George. And you know what he did? He snapped at it. And he nearly cut my fin right off. Even Mr. Bubbles is afraid of him. Fred said I should stay on my side of the bowl. And I said, look, the entire bowl is my side of the bowl. I was here first. I will gladly share with you, but you cannot be so mean at me or any of my friends. And you know what Fred did? He snapped at me again, and he nearly got me. And poor Melvin, he's a lover. He's not a fighter. He literally fainted right to the bottom of the bowl. Poor, poor, poor Melvin. Of course, he still had the green gunk all over his face because he likes to save it for a snack. Gross. Okay, day nine, that's it. My bowl now contains a sunken pirate ship, two guppies named Rhonda and Clark, an angelfish named Cha-Cha, who says she's from Hollywood. Like, that's actually even a real name, Cha-Cha? And really, fish from Hollywood? I think she's making it up. I can't even turn around without bumping into something. At least Melvin is happy. In fact, he's way more than happy. Because there's more and more green gunk on the bowl every single day. He literally sits and eats the green stuff all day long. And I said, Melvin, could you please at least wipe your face? Because there's plenty of green gunk on the side of the bowl. And Melvin said, uh, George, I like the green gunk. And he continued eating. It was disgusting. Boy, day 10. Things are getting ridiculous now. I was trying to find room for a swim because I'm a fish and that's what fish are supposed to do. Remember back in the day when I was able to swim around my bowl in crystal clear, delicious water? Well, not anymore. Because while I was trying to swim around my bowl today, Rhonda and Clark told me they were going to have baby soon. Like there's room for more fish in here. And then Fred knocked over Mr. Bubbles and became tangled in a plant. And all Mr. Bubbles did was go, I could tell he was upset. Chacha said she couldn't help me with Mr. Bubbles, but she needed me to apply sunscreen to her. She said she had a big movie premiere coming up and didn't want to get burnt. I just looked at her like, fish, first of all, don't get suntan. Second of all, they don't have movie premieres. And all Cha-Cha did was look at me like I had no idea what I was doing. Like maybe I had lobster growing out of my ears. And guess what? The sides of the bowl are covered in more and more green slime. And Melvin said that he can't eat anymore. That he actually has a little bit of an upset belly, even though he still has the green gunk all over his face. It's starting to get disgusting in here. This is no way for a fish to live. I remember when my bowl was full of crystal clear, delicious, correct temperature water. Not this cesspool that I'm living in now. <sighs> Day 11. I in a, an absolute nervous wreck. I was trying to avoid Fred today and I turned around and quickly, quickly came face to face with my reflection in the mirror. I nearly jumped out of my gills. 
I didn't even look like myself. I just need to relax. I told myself, George, relax. Please relax. Please, please, please relax. You're doing this to yourself. Your blood pressure's going to go up. Oh, George, you've got to stop. But I couldn't. There was just way too much commotion going on. Way, way, way too much commotion. I couldn't even swim, but I'm a fish. And if swimming makes me relax, and I can't relax when all the chaos is going on. I just need to relax. Day 12. I've had it. Ron and Clark were racing around the bowl. Fred was fighting with Mr. Bubbles. Melvin kept belching. It smelled so bad. An underwater, slimy green, disgusting snail burp. Gross. And Chacha told me I was standing in her light, that she needed more light so that way she could be the perfect golden blonde for her movie premiere. And that's what happened. I didn't mean to do it. I would never, ever do it, but it just happened. I screamed, this is my bowl! I want my bowl back! You guys, no one asked whether or not they could come here. They just all moved in. Nobody asked it. Everyone's being insensitive to me. I want my bowl back! And everybody just stared at me. They stared at me, and I knew the moment that I said it that I was wrong. I knew that I shouldn't have done that. I was just so upset. I should have never done that. And guess what? The rest of the evening, everybody avoided me. I was so sad. I was so apologetic. And I thought to myself, in the morning, I will apologize because I should have never talked to my friends like that. Day 13. Today, I got my wish, sort of. With a whoosh and a splash and a clink and a plunge, I was suddenly in a very, 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 very tiny bowl of crystal clear, pure, correct temperature water. And I thought to myself, oh, goodness. It was small, but it was all mine. It was absolutely heavenly. It was a bowl of beautiful, clear water with no Fred and no Chacha and no belching and no green slime, no Mr. Bubbles, no nothing. It was just all mine. It was small, but it was all mine. And I finally got to swim around my new bowl. Twice, of course. But then something happened. I started to think to myself, what had I done wrong? What was going to happen? I mean, when I last saw Mr. Bubbles, he was tangled in green. Who was going to help him? Poor Melvin was probably sick as a dogfish. He needed me. Maybe he needed me to rub his back, help him get a couple extra belches out. I would do it even though they do stink. And Chacha, she was probably going to get sun sunburn. I mean, I didn't really know if she could get sunburn or not. But what if she does, and her movie premiere is ruined? And what about poor Rhonda Clark? Did Rhonda have her baby guppies? There's probably thousands of them. They're going to need me to help make guppy bottles. And unfortunately, you change guppy diapers, but I'll do it. Even Fred needs me. I'm the only one that can really talk to that crabby guy. Have they even noticed that I'm gone? Does anyone miss me? And then it happened. And it's not that easy because fish don't really do it, but I started to cry. I had big old fish tears running down my cheeks. Now I'm a fish and I swim in water, but I was able to make big giant tears. All I could think about was my friends and how rude I was to them and how meanly I treated them and how they needed me. And I thought and I thought and I thought, what in the world am I going to do? What could I do? I thought, in the morning, I'll come up with a plan. Maybe, just maybe, Amazon can deliver me. Maybe there's a way. I'm not sure. But after a long, sad night, 
There was a whoosh and a splash and a clink and a plunge, and I was suddenly sprayed in the face by bubbles. And not just any old bubbles, but good old Mr. Bubbles bubbles. And I was like, woohoo, I'm back. Mr. Bubbles gurped a happy tune. Rodden and Clark raced by two, like me with two speedboats, followed by 12 of the cutest baby guppies that you have ever seen. And even Melvin, his belly was no longer upset. He waved his tail at me from the clean glass of the enormous tank. I mean, this tank was like 50,000 times bigger than our bowl. And there Cha-Cha sat happily beneath an umbrella. And I even think Fred missed me because he had a big giant smile. I told you, Fred actually loved me. I mean, look at everybody was so happy to see me. I was so happy to be back. All I wanted to do was apologize for being so rude. We were all back together, and I looked around and realized I was part of a big family. And I guess I must have been smiling gill to gill, because Clark said, Uh, George, you, uh, you kind of look real happy there. And I said, I want to see for myself. Where's the mirror at? And Clark was like, uh, what mirror are you talking about, George? And Fred said, yeah, we don't have a mirror. And I said, no mirror? That's impossible. There was a mirror the other day. When I turned around, when I couldn't relax, I saw it. I saw my face. It didn't even look like myself. But maybe, just maybe, it wasn't me at all. Maybe somebody else was in the tank that looked just like me. Maybe, oh maybe, there was a friend in here that I hadn't been introduced to yet. Well, everybody, I would like to introduce you to my new best friend. Her name is Gracie. And Gracie is the color of the most beautiful tangerine that you've ever seen. She has the prettiest eyes on a goldfish that you will have ever seen. She is the nicest goldfish in the entire world. She's just like me, but better. And when all my friends saw how happy I was, I turned to them and I apologized. And I said, I was so sorry for the way that I acted. I was so sorry for yelling at them that I would never do it again. And they all, even Fred, said they accepted. And afterwards, my new best friend, Gracie, and I, well, we swam around the bowl. How many times do you think, boys and girls? Oh, I think I heard somebody say it, actually. Oops. Yep. They swam around the bowl twice, holding fins happy as can be. The end. Okay, so I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Remember, on Thursday, and I'll be releasing it just a little bit earlier than today, I'll be doing another story from a different school. Um, if you have a favorite book, that you would like for me to read, please have your parents put the book name in the comment section below. And I won't be able to get to every single one of them, but I will try my hardest. Now, remember, be a good helper. Do not do things to make your mom and dad angry with you because, well, we don't want that. You guys have a good rest of your day, and I will see you Thursday, which is in two days. Goodbye.